All right, next we have the ceiling rings on the rear cover. So watch out, they snap easily. Don't do that with the new one. Let me show you, give you a close up of how these work. So there's two little hooks that just go like that. Watch out though, when you're taking the old ones out, the hooks could break and you might have little pieces stuck in there. So be uh, careful to clean everything up. We're going to now install the <clears throat> transfer drive gear and output shaft assemblies. So we're going to Alright, next we're going to torque these to 204 inch pounds. Alright, so <clears throat> around this, uh, we're going to install the transfer drive gear, and there's a little gap right here uh, that doesn't have a bolt hole. If you look behind here, there's a gap right there. Uh, so that's where that's how this goes on. This gap here goes on this gap there. I, I'm using two screwdrivers. I'm using two screwdrivers to align these two holes as I drop it down. That way it makes installation much easier. Run these down finger tight. So now we're going to turn this so the other holes are showing, and we're going to install these bolts the same way, finger tight. Alright, so it's very important that you put this on evenly. So now that I have all these bolts started, I'm going to go around uh, little by little, maybe one or two turns on each bolt, and then turn it and do the same thing until this is down evenly all the way, and then I'm, I'm going to torque it to spec. Alright, so because um, because these are recessed in here and they are Torx bits, they're really awkward to try to uh, torque down the spec, uh, especially because you need an extension and uh, I was slipping a little bit, didn't want to strip anything out. So what I did was I just um, used some blue Loctite on each of these bolts and just tightened it as hard as I can um, with a quarter inch because of, that way I wasn't slipping. And that is actually what the person did before me. That's why when I was removing these bolts, uh, they were so difficult to remove. Next we're installing the low reverse piston. There's only one way to put it in. This little notch goes in that little notch right there. There we go. Just to see if you can spin it, that's how you'll know it's down all the way and we can't. And this little notch here lines up with this notch right here, so this is in all the way. Now we have the return spring. This goes right there. And then the spring retainer. Goes in like that. I have to stand this up so it doesn't fall. There we go, just like that. Okay, so I just put on the one-way clutch inner race, this guy right here. And what you should do is there's a notch on the top and the bottom, and those face vertically this way. And you'll notice that wherever there's a little hole on the um, 
the gear below it, there's also the gear to get a little flat around each hole. See that? So that's how you know that this is aligned correctly. Okay, I've reattached the special tool. We're going to run it down. And then with that down, we're going to put the snap ring on. Might be easier said than done. Okay, we're gonna um, assemble the pieces in such a way that we can take certain clearance measurements. I'm gonna put in the wavy spring first, then a steel. Clutch. Steel. Clutch. I did not put in the pressure plate. Um, I'm now going to insert special this special tool. Um, part number MB991631. Uh, you have to have this special tool for this clearance measurement, unfortunately. You can get it on the internet, um, but you know, I got this for clearance. It was a lot cheaper than it usually was, so I got lucky in that respect. Now we're going to put a steel uh, plus on top of that, and then we have this snap ring. There we go. So on top of that, we're going to put the reaction plate. And then we have the other snap ring that pulls that in. There we go. Okay, now we're going to check the clearance between uh, this pressure plate here and the snap ring we just put in. The book says to pull up on this pressure plate and then use a dial indicator to measure the difference in movement on the pressure plate. But you can also just push the pressure plate down and try to fit a feeler gauge between the pressure plate and the snap ring. So the, the clearance is between zero and 0.16 millimeters. Um, this is 0.063 millimeters, and I can't fit this in, so we're we're within spec. Okay, now um, we're still assembling things weird until we finish um, all the measurements, and then we're going to take all this out and assemble it correctly. Uh, so next, we're going to continue this. We're going to install a clutch disc, and then we're going to install this. Um, uh, steel, but this steel has a little step. I don't know if you can see that. See that little step right there? So we're going to install that steel, and that little step goes facing down. Another clutch. Uh, we have another steel. This one's just a regular steel. Another clutch. Uh, and then you do not install the pressure plate yet because this is what you need to really measure is uh, the clearance for that. We're going to install where is it? Here it is. going to install another one of these. This is the same exact part number, another special tool. goes in like that. Now after that we have the return spring for the second brake piston and then uh, the second brake piston itself. Let's lube this up. 
use some Vaseline to lube this up. There we go. It's all the way down now. We're going to install the snap ring. To get this snap ring on easy, I just took the pressure plate, put it around the snap ring and piston, and just pushed down, and then it snapped in all around the side. Alright, so now what we need to do is we need to measure the movement right here. This movement when we pull up on this special tool. And this tells us the thickness of the pressure plate that we need. So, what I'm going to do, I don't have a dial indicator set up, um, I'm going to just anchor this right here on this lip right here, I can push down so it doesn't move, and um, uh, I'm just going to put down the spike of this tool all the way, and then just pull up on it, do that a few times, average it out uh, so it's accurate, and then do that in a few different places. So just to show you once what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put this on the lip, um, push down on this so the spike of the tool hits the um, hits the special tool below it. Right now it's at point what is that? It's at point eight two. I lift up on the on the plate. It goes to point seven seven. So it's roughly point oh five um, of a measurement. So I'm going to do that multiple times in the same spot, take an average, do that in multiple spots. Um, and all this is just because I don't have a dial indicator so it's not 100% precise to do, it this, to do it this way. Okay, so the average, um, uh, the average distance this move was 0 0.055 inches which amounts to approximately 1.4 millimeters. Okay, so um, the amount of movement that I measured after converting to millimeters was about 1.4 millimeters. Uh, so if we look at this table, we're working on the F4, A4, 2, and we go down to 1.4, and it's at the beginning of this um, range, or it's at the end of this range, but the beginning of this one. So these are the thicknesses of the pressure plate that we need to get into within spec. So I took a measurement of this, the old pressure plate, and it is pretty much 2.4 millimeters, so that corresponds to this one, and we are, we are good, we are within spec if we just use this pressure plate again. Okay, so I flipped the transmission over, uh, now we're going to measure the movement of that first special tool that I put in. Uh, I just have the caliper down, I'm going to do the same thing, uh, it's touching the special tool, I'm reaching from the bottom. And we're going to push up and measure the movement, do that a bunch of times, take an average. Alright, so I measured about 0.06 inches, um, and that amounts to about a little over 1.5 millimeters. So uh, we look at this table here. Again, that's the end of this one because we're working on the F4A42. Uh, also, uh, this dash 2 means that this has a one-way clutch, which it does. So uh, we're working on this one. 1.5, one, uh, 1 it's a little over 1.5, so we're in here. So we need a thickness for, of a pressure plate of about 1.8 millimeters. Uh, I measured the thickness of the one that's already in there, and it is 1.8 millimeters, so this is, um, this is a good pressure plate. Alright, so now that we're done with all the clearance measurements, I'm going to flip this back around to remove all the parts I put in up into the, um, right after that we use the special tool. And then we're going to install it uh, in the correct way.
Okay, so before we put that stuff together, uh, we gotta finish putting the output shaft assembly back on. So I'm gonna put on this collar up to the bottom. Um, and then we got the bearing that will go on top of it. There we go. We're gonna lube up this uh, nut. This is a new lock nut. The lock nut on, remember it's left handed threads to go on. Okay, I'm holding it with my Stressel tool on that side. I'm going to hold it straight so the bearing seats properly. Now we're just going to tighten this until it starts to bind up. When you're doing this, um, make sure that the bearing goes in straight and isn't cocked to the side that it goes into the race evenly. There, like I said, there's a special tool that you can use to align it, but you can get it in if you just keep straight. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to torque this to about 126 foot-pounds. On the output shaft nut, there are these two tabs that you need to punch in so that um, the nut doesn't come loose. Alright, so now we're going to install the planetary carrier assembly. Put this face down. There we go. Make sure goes, it turns in one direction and locks in the other. And now we're going to install the planetary uh, reverse sun gear. This goes right over top. Alright, so we're going to install the uh, uh, wavy spring right here. Make sure it sits in there nicely. Uh, we have the pressure plate. This goes in next. After the pressure plate comes the clutches and steels. Now we have the snap ring that goes in. Okay, next we have the pressure plate. There's a little step. The step goes face down. Then we have a snap ring that goes on. Put the snap ring in. Okay, we got more clutches and steels. Again, we have this stepped steel that goes with the step facing down. Then we have the pressure plate. Now we put the return spring on. And <clears throat> in this wall right here, there's a hole. And that hole corresponds to this hole right here. That's the feed hole from where um, uh, the transmission fluid activates this piston. It has to be facing this way. Um, you'll notice that there's a little notch here that um, aligns with this notch right here. Again, I, and I have Vaseline on this so it slides in because it's a pretty tight fit. Alright, so I'm going to try to put this snap ring on. First let me get it level in there. Because you need to push down the piston and then put the snap ring on. Okay, um, this is proving to be a little difficult. Okay, I'm pushing it down with two screwdrivers. And slowly putting the snap ring on. I got it on two sides already, so I should just be able to push this down and I 
There we go. Snap right into place. Okay, we're going to put this bearing in now. Uh, to put it in, you can see it has a direction orientation. We want this side facing up. So you see on the side here, it has like that little lip. That lip has to be facing up and it goes in this little groove right there. Okay, now we have this hub here that goes in the middle. And then we have another bearing and it's going to once again, this lip goes facing up like that. Then we have the other clutch hub here. It's going to drop in this. Wiggle it around. All right, now we're going to install this bearing. This side goes facing up. It goes right in there. All right, next we have these three O-rings on the side. We're going to install next. Okay, so. Uh, this race that goes on top of this bearing I just put in is selective. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop that in. And we are going to install the rear cover uh, without any gasket or anything. We're going to torque it down the spec. And then flip it over and measure the end play of the sun gear. Do not force this on. If it doesn't go down all the way, then uh, nothing, everything isn't seated correctly. 